Hi, I'm Chuck Fishbein, and welcome to Shoot Like a Pro. Although it's often said rules are made to be broken, I found it wise to first learn the rules before I throw them aside. If you're hoping to have your work appear on more screens than just Vimeo or YouTube, proper exposure and white balance are two essential rules that you should try to respect. Let's start with exposure. Television broadcasters have rules in place that require your video to conform to certain standards that they refer to as legal. These standards refer to how bright your whites can be and how deep your blacks could go. Because of all the possible variations of video, such as your subject matter, camera settings, and the way your monitor is set up, these standards are in place to ensure that the quality of the video you've just created looks and sounds the same on your viewer's monitor as it does on yours. Of course, these same rules apply if you're using more than one camera in your production, or if you have to hand your footage off to someone else to edit. Even though some corrections can be made in post, it's certainly to everyone's advantage to start off with the best possible image. A camera set to automatic might give you an exposure that's legal, but not necessarily one that is the most pleasing or useful. With all their sophistication, internal camera meters can easily be fooled. To test this out, just try positioning your subject in front of a bright window or white wall, and see how dark your subject becomes. Most professional video cameras incorporate a tool called zebras, which can help you obtain a proper exposure. Zebras measure the luminance of your image, and the zebra levels, which are set by the user, provide an indication of exposure levels. When switched on, diagonal lines or stripes will appear in any part of the picture that is approaching overexposure. By setting your camera zebras to 100%, and then adjusting your exposure until the zebra stripes in your viewfinder have disappeared, you're ensuring that your basic exposure will be legal and not overexposed. It's okay to leave a small amount of zebras on your highlights, as eliminating everything might make your image too dark. You can also set your zebras to 70 or 75, which will give you the average exposure for most faces. But just like setting your camera on auto, you still need to assess your image to get your intended results. You can use the camera's iris, gain, neutral density filters, and shutter speed, or a combination of any of these to adjust for these levels. But please be aware that adjusting the gain or shutter speed can affect your image by adding noise or causing less fluid motion. By moving away from that bright window or white wall, or at the least changing your angle slightly, you'll greatly affect your end results. White balance is another basic rule that once you have it down, can easily be broken to suit your taste and help create the look of your production. White balance is mainly based on the Kelvin color temperature scale, which runs from 1000 to 10,000 degrees Kelvin, with the warmest temperature being candlelight at around 1900 Kelvin, and the coolest temperature being an open blue sky or partly cloudy sky at the other extreme. The most common Kelvin settings for your white balance are usually based around 3200K for indoor lighting and 5600K for outdoors. Like exposure, these are starting points and will be affected greatly by your surroundings. Household lighting, fluorescence, neon, overcast skies, sunrises, and sunsets all have different color temperatures, and it's up to you to decide how accurate you want your colors to be. To set your white balance, aim your camera at a white card and then press the white balance button on your camera. Make sure that the white card includes the light falling on your subject. Sometimes you'll need to zoom or move closer to your subject so that the other colors in the image don't affect the final balance. If you're using your camera's auto white balance setting, it can easily be fooled when it sees a bright yellow shirt or a brilliant blue sky might send your white balance way off in the wrong direction. So in these cases, you'll want to set your white balance manually. Now, this effect can work to your advantage by using warm cards to set a manual white balance instead of a normal white card. These specially tinted cards make it easy to fool the camera into creating a slightly warmer or cooler image. They can even help take the green hue out of cheap fluorescent lighting. In some situations, you won't be able to control all the light sources entering a scene, so you'll have to find a preferred balance. Bright windows, street lamps, or any combination of color temperatures will affect your final image. So choosing one neutral balance for your main subject and letting the other sources go where they will might well be the best answer. 
If the main source lighting you're seeing is a beautiful warm sunset, correcting it to a normal white balance might completely kill the mood, so you really need to judge each scene on its own merit. Most film and video lighting is considered either tungsten or daylight. Some of the newer LED lights are capable of shifting between both, allowing them to match colors in between. Or, you can use colored gels to help shift the color temperature of most lighting fixtures. You can also cover the windows of your shooting area with color gel to correct the incoming light. Of course, you can intentionally adjust the white balance to help create a specific mood that will enhance your production. Many Sony cameras allow you to adjust a preset white balance within the camera's menu. This way, you can dial in the color temperature that you prefer. The warmth or coolness of a scene will help express the emotion you're trying to convey in any given image. Creating a cool, bluish environment can elicit an air of intrigue or suspense. Or imagine a tender love scene bathed in a glow of warm golden light. Become aware of this as you watch your favorite film and television programs. You have an entire university of filmmaking techniques right there in your living room. If you have any additional questions or comments, please contact me at the address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, I'm Chuck Fishbein. Keep shooting.